everyone. Uh, I'm Tanya. And uh, OK, so um, my previous job, I was like a web app pen tester. And then I started uh, working at Microsoft. And I, they, they like let me do whatever I want to Azure, which is really cool. And I realized that like everyone I know is like, can you show me how to do a pen test in Azure? And I was like, uh, maybe I should write a talk. So then I met my friend Terry. Terry's an AWS hero. And she can just shatter the crap out of anything. She's amazing. And I was like, do you want to write a talk with me? And then she actually said yes. So she's not here because she got offered so much money that she had to go do something else. <laughs> and, uh, and I have to say, if I got offered that much money, I'd probably go too. But anyway, so she's really amazing, and we wrote this talk together. OK, so where are we going to, oh yeah, I have to stand still. What are we going to talk about today? So we're going to talk about doing it yourself. We're going to talk about doing a security assessment yourself before calling a pen tester. So usually when someone like me or someone like Terry, who's been like networking forever, they go in, like it's the basics that aren't done. People aren't even ready for the pen test. And so I want to show you all the stuff that, because if I come in and then like everyone, if the security is like here, then you're not getting your money out of me. Does that make sense? So I want you to be able to do this much yourself so when I come in, you're like, you have to earn that paycheck. OK, so here's the mandatory about me slide. This is the one where like, we prove that we're qualified to do our talk, I like punk rock. And uh, I'm Tanya Janka. On the internet, I'm she acts purple. I work at that startup company. I don't know if you've heard of us. Uh, <laughs> I am a developer advocate, which means I get to do my hobby and then they get me money. Um, I'm totally obsessed with OWASP. It's ridiculous. Um, I'm part of WOSEC, Women of Security. So if you're a woman and you want to make more female friends that work in security, you can talk to me. And oh, also, I speak French in case anyone wants to ask questions in French if you're shy. This is Terry. Terry's awesome. I'm Terry's biggest fan. She's Badass cloud hacker. I wanted to like put over top of this just badass cloud hacker. And she's like, no, Tanya, just remain calm. <laughs> and she's a lot more serious and like very professional when she presents. And I'm the silly one. So she's been programming forever. She is so basically she does cloud security, training, and testing. And she has a wealth of experience that's just out of this world. And I learn from her every time I see her. So what is a security assessment? It's not a pen test, slightly different. So we find all the vulnerabilities and gaps and then try to help you fix them, right? So we're going to do a lot of scanning. We're going to talk to people. We're going to, if you'll let us, look at like an architecture review. We might threat model things. And then at the end, just the same as a pen test, we give you a report, except for like, it's just, I, I don't know. I prefer security assessments, but pen tests are cooler. Um, OK, so as a pen test. So it's similar to a security assessment, except for you burn everything down. <laughs> it, excludes, it includes exploitation, pivoting to other areas. Um, there may be targets, objectives, like things you're supposed to steal. Basically, you're trying to prove the systems can be broken into. Um, Terry's way better at this than I am. I'm more like, I'm going to help you set up really good policies and do this and do that. And she's more like, ha, ha, and then everything's on fire. Um, but you still have to do a report. There's no getting around it. <laughs> OK, so why would you want to do it yourself? Why, why would you? Because like, we're expensive. Pen testers are expensive. Also, like, almost no places have their own pen testers on staff. Like unless you work at a big startup like I do, you can't usually afford like a team of pen testers. You also want to have like not the same pen tester come every time because you want a fresh set of eyes. But a security assessment, you can do that yourself. So list, we're going to go through a big list of things that I want you to go look at if you have Azure. OK, so who here uses Azure? Awesome. OK, I want all of you to have good experiences because then my boss will think I'm cool. No, because I want you to be secure. OK, so I want you to be able to do all these things before you bother to call a pen tester so I can save you money. And because I, I just I want the internet to be safe, the end. OK, so first thing, do not test the, aver the Azure fabric. You don't want Microsoft to be angry at you. You don't. <laughs> I don't either. So that means the infrastructure the fabric of the cloud, like that's the thing that is us, that makes us unhappy. Um, so you do not, so none of the cloud providers now demand that you tell them in advance if you're doing, um, like if you're going to do a pen test, but you should. It's just so much easier because if we see something, we might just be like, no, right? Because we're trying to protect all the people and if what you're doing is kind of like out of the blue and weird, we might not understand that. And so if you tell us you're coming, you don't need permission. You're just like, hey, tomorrow I'm going to make a mask. Thank you. We'll watch out for that. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so here are things that are out of scope. So there's a lot of things I'm not gonna cover in this talk. Sometimes after talk, people will be like, you didn't cover this. I'm like, yeah, that's not what the talk was about. So I'm gonna give you a list, because I only basically talk about AppSec all the time. <laughs> Uh, so we're not going to talk about DevOps security, we're not going to talk about application security, API security, password management, physical security, enterprise security. We're just going to talk about if you were going to assess the security of your Azure implementation, how would you do it? Or if you're a consultant and you're going to do it for someone else. We're only going to cover that. There's also going to be, after this slide, no more Rickrolling. That's the last one. <laughs> okay. So let's do this. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is define the scope of your assessment, right? Guess what's bad? It's testing a thing you're not supposed to, and then your boss getting pissed, especially if you're a consultant. This is way, way more important if you're a consultant because, because you don't want to piss off your clients. If you work there full time, they like know you and they know your intentions, but if you're a consultant, like you are on the thin ice all the time. I know, I've been one. So you want to talk about like, is data part of this? Is application security a part of this? Because some of them think that it is and some of them think it's not. And I assure you, everyone has a different opinion. I've learned. Because sometimes they're like, oh, but you're also going to fish our employees. I'm like, no, what? You don't want me for that. They'll be like, that is Tanya. Isn't it? Everyone has different skill set, right? So definitely in this, network security is part of it. Access control is going to be a part of it. You need to make sure that each thing is, and you want to make sure also that they're not like, hey, you were supposed to test that and you didn't, right? So you want to make sure everyone's on the same page. Also, um, often they want to talk about methodology. Uh, I've seen a lot of people point to like that pen tester methodology web page and it's like copy and paste it and I'm like, no. I like, I try to explain to them what I'm going to do with like real words that they understand and then I actually like write it into an appendix so that they know because I just want them to be comfortable and I'd rather spend a bit more time, but that's me. Okay, so also, are you going to only do cloud stuff or are you going to do internal stuff? Or do they have a multi-cloud instance? So a lot of what is happening right now, I'm not sure if you're aware, but so a lot of people are so super duper duper in bed with one cloud provider, they realize like that is a lot of eggs and only one basket. And so what they're doing is they're doing two clouds and they have them talk to each other, they have secure stuff in between and they monitor them both. Are both clouds in scope? <laughs> you definitely want to make sure that you know that before you get in trouble. Um, you also want to know if you're supposed to test the incident handling or not. Make sure the incident team knows you're coming. Everyone, you know that. Okay, so you want to make sure that each thing that is or is not in scope. Okay, here's the scope of our assessment. So we made this talk because I was like trying to, so I have like this little show with my friend Nancy and Francisca and Nicole. Uh, and basically, um, so we just like live stream us being nerdy. And so I really wanted to have Terry on. <laughs> so I was like, let's do a pen test of our website. So we did one. Uh, so we did one of devslop.co. That's my open source projects website. It's, it's ugly, I know. Um, so we did also my entire Azure subscription at that moment. Um, we did the SQL database for the app, the network, stuff I was supposed to have deleted from previous demos but had forgotten, and the VMs, and there would have been containers but I didn't have any, so haha, -ha, Terry couldn't get them. Um, we didn't test the web app itself because we already do that on the show all the time. So that is our scope that we set. Um, we made a video just as an FYI and we wrote a bunch of articles which I'll share at the end so you can see like in detail all the steps we did and demos and stuff so that, and then there's like a checklist that's written down for you. So just so you know, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. Okay, so the very first thing that Azure will, so Azure will nag you. <laughs> um, it will tell you like, this is bad. Um, so the very first thing that it always tells you is like, go, so go check that every single subscription has multi-factor authentication on. This is the keys to your kingdom. This is the keys to everything ever. So it will give you, 50 Azure security points. It'll congratulate you and be happy. It will nag you constantly if you don't do it because MFA, multi-factor authentication, is so important. Um, uh, I was supposed to wear a t-shirt on stage but they didn't have my size. But anyway, so um, I made a video about how to do that 
So on the bottom, a bunch of these things are going to have links, and it's either an article or a video about how to do the thing that I'm talking about, because again, I don't want to leave you hanging. Sometimes I find it frustrating. I go to a technical talk, and then I'm like, oh, that's cool. How do I do that? Or like I look it up, and there's like 50 pages. I'm like, which one's the one that I should look at? This is the one I think you should look at. Um, but anyway, so number one is that you should do that. I don't know if anyone follows me online, but I've been hassling the crap out of all. So I'm from Canada. That's why I say aboot. Um, <laughs> yeah, I like. I don't think that it's weird. But anyway, so I, like, I so we only have six banks in Canada, unlike America, where I hear you have at least ten. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, like, only one of them uses multi-factor authentication. And I'm like, yo, I gave you all my money. I really want it to be secure. So I've been just hassling them over and over. And then, so I wrote an article about multi-factor authentication. And I'm just, it's really, really important. And so this is just very dear to my heart that I want us to protect all of our customers. OK. Next, so identity and access management. So you want to make sure that you have roles set up. You can make your own custom roles. Almost everyone does. Uh, like if you're an enterprise, if you're, you know, if you're a startup, whatever, if you have six people, you don't need to make your own roles. But if you have like 20,000 people, you're probably going to have things that are very special for you. You want to make sure people have the right roles. So if I'm a DBA, I should have database owner access, but I'm not a DBA. So I should not have it. And Azure actually always complains to me about it. It's like you shouldn't have DB owner, Tanya. I'm like, I know. Um, so you want to go and verify those. You can set those in policies within Azure. You can create your own custom policies. When I used to think of policies, what I thought of was, because um, I worked for the Canadian government, and it would be like a website of like white like space and then black text that would just go on endlessly. And, um, and it would be boring, and I wouldn't understand what it meant. <laughs> but when we say policy here, what we mean is, is it's like a list of rules that are kind of true or false that you've set. And then it goes and it checks for you in real time and says, that guy doesn't have MFA on. That website's available via HTTP. No. That's, and so it tells you all the policies that you've broken. Um, and uh, so that's what we mean when we say policy. So I don't know about you, but when I hear policy, I think of a lot of text. Um, you also want to make sure that you're doing least privilege. So again, don't give Tanya database owner access because she's not a DBA. Um, another thing you want to verify is that you're using service accounts when you should use service accounts. So if I am a person that is using our network, I am. I'm Tanya Jenk on the network. But when I make the DevSlop app and it needs to talk to my database, it shouldn't be Tanya's credentials. Because what if I quit, right? Or like, what if I become evil? <laughs> OK, what if I quit? <laughs> um, and so the idea is, is that then you have this service principle or a service account that does this. You should never be having your apps call things with some developer's credentials. That's very dangerous. That also means that that developer has superpowers. You don't want that. You want to see Tanya did this, but the DevSlop database made this request, and that they're separate. So you, when you look at logs, it, they make sense. OK. Um, these apply to everything in Azure. You can, you can set up a thing for literally everything, because um, that's how it works. This can work in multi-cloud situations. So if you extend Azure AD onto your premises or into, like let's say, AWS or GCP, it will monitor all the things there. So you can have it do all the stuff there, or you can use a different identity system within Azure. Um, it also works for Azure Stack. So Azure Stack is like where you have your own data center and you're like, no way I'm putting that in Azure, but I really like Azure, so we're going to bring Azure home. <laughs> um, and so then here's like, so um, we have this thing called Microsoft Learn, which are basically free lessons. Um, and so I made one. I did not make this one. But it's basically they're around like 45 minute to an hour like walkthrough with sandboxes so you can try things and play with them. And um, so I made one. It's like five security things developers need to do before they push to prod. Um, but so basically, like we have one on most of the things because we want you to do it right. OK. This is a Terry slide, so pretend I'm being very serious. <laughs> OK, so account structure and governance. Um, so this is probably different than in your home data center if you have an on-premise site um, or if you have an on-premise data center. So everything goes down kind of like this. You can have this top view where you see everything, right? Or if you're me, you're 
pretty close to the bottom. Um, <laughs> and so I can only see me and then like my teammates because that's how we've arranged it. Of course, I was like, I should do security for our whole team. They're like, please remain calm. No, you cannot look in your coworkers' subscriptions. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so you want to make sure that you have policies and that they cover everything. You want to make sure that people only have access to the things they're supposed to. For instance, you don't want me being able to add security to everyone else's apps without their permission. <laughs> um, all of these things, so for its accounts, management groups, subscriptions, and resource groups. Resource groups are like a directory or a folder in Windows. Um, they're not like a real thing. They're not like, um, it's not like a network security group. It is not protected. It's just like, oh, I'm going to put all the things for this project in this bucket. But everything can see everything else. Just to be clear, those are not security borders. Those are just for organizational purposes. So please don't assume that when you put something in a resource group. Okay. But you can give permissions to resource groups. Okay. So who's heard of CIS? The security for, yeah, Center for Security, uh, Internet Security. It's like crowdsourced security knowledge, which is really, really, really cool. And they have um, best practices, benchmarks, and um, they have so much cool stuff. So a whole bunch of people, so like we contribute to it, and we also benefit from it. And lots and lots of governments do, especially in the United States. Okay, so CIS uh, is kind of famous for their 20 critical controls. Um, so when we're creating all these policies in Azure, and by we, I mean like they did the hard work. Um, one of the things they decided to do is like, oh, like what if you could just check if you're following the sys benchmarks? What if you could just check to see if you're HIPAA compliant? So we've added, I don't know if I have a screenshot of that, but um, we've added a thing where you can just go check and it'll tell you one by one if you are or are not compliant to these and it'll point you to where you're not compliant and you can click it and then you can go down and it, once the lecture's over, then you can go fix it. <laughs> well, well, I don't know. I think that's pretty cool because um, I like it when I get point, rather than like, you have a lot of vulnerabilities in that app, it, I like to have it be like, this virtual machine does not have this enabled or this one's missing this patch. I like it to be really specific. Okay, so here's some sample controls. Um, inventory and control of software assets. Who has a perfect list of every single app that is in their cloud or on-prem? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, right? So this will tell you, um, so this is an assessment, and then there's controlled use of administrative privileges. Guess who doesn't get administrative privileges at work? I know, right? <laughs> Only C-level executives need that. <laughs> okay, so um, on top of, so it, oh, here it is. It's, here's where it will assess sys benchmarks. So we have one for, Azure, Exchange Server, IIS, etc. A lot of companies do this because we want you to follow best practices. <laughs> so we want to make it easy so you can go and download the CIS benchmark and have like this checklist of things to check. But like I said, in Azure, it's automated. Um, so you can go through and then click on it and it'll tell you. Okay, another thing you can do is you can download images that are already hardened and set to this. That's cool. I'm lazy. I don't want to do things twice. If someone else is going to do it for me, that's awesome. So we have, I believe, 126 as of May when we made this slide. Not bad, right? Okay, so one more example control. So ensure that restricted access to Azure AD administrative portal is set to yes. So then it actually gives you the exact, here it is, step by step, like what menu you click on, exactly where you go. Um, Microsoft is Microsoft, right? It's going to be like glossy. We want to hold your hand. We want to make sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's not like an open source project where it's like you just have to download these 25 other things and compile them yourself and then also just, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. So we're, we really want you to get to the end. <laughs> okay. So then, um, so my favorite part and the thing that you should probably look at right after you ensure MFA is turned on is that you should just go to the security center. Um, I have a link at the bottom. So I'm not, I'm not doing a demo. One, because I don't have time, and two, because I'm afraid of the internet here. And I was just like, I am not willing to sign in and use my, I'm just not willing to do that on this, it's, sorry. No offense. It's not you, it's all people not in this room. <laughs> um, but so this is like the start of what it looks like, and there's three sections. So the first one at the top, you can see policy and compliance. So we have a secure score. What is a secure score? I know people are like, oh, gamification, blah, blah, blah. When I worked in like a 
not in a SOC, but like I was on the incident response team and like the enterprise security team, it was really hard for me to show my boss I was doing a good job because he would only see me when there was an incident or not at all. Right? So then, like, if he didn't see me for a month, it's like, oh, is Tanya even working? And then when he would see me, my name was a swear word. And so <laughs> here I can say, like, look, I went from 48 to 550. Like, I've done, I've checked off these things. So you can see, like, your mark go up of when you improve different things. And it also helps you know, like, what the biggest bang is for your buck. Like, if it, we give you five points, it's a low priority. If we give you 50 points, that's the highest you can get, and that's for turning on multi-factor authentication. Um, and so then also regu regulatory compliance, so ISO 27001, et cetera. So you cl click on those, and as best we can, we're going to tell you where you've done a good job or not. Okay. This is the part where you can figure out who is or is not covered by Azure Security Center. So there's like a free version, and then there's like the paid version. I work there, so I have the paid version. The free version's completely awesome, and then the paid version's like even better. Basically, you get a bunch of extra tools that we made, and you want to make sure that at least the purple is at 100% or the blue. You do not want any in the gray of not covered. It's free. Come on. Um, so you don't want anything to not at least give you like the list of things you're missing, right? Okay. Oh, and I have like little links at the bottom to all of these because um, I felt I didn't have enough time to explain all of them and I'm so worried. I How much time do I have? Oops. Okay, sorry. Okay, I better move it. All right, so um, this is where you set security policies. Those are the things like the checklist will basically like, one of the things for instance I want, I, I, I only want my apps to be available via HTTPS. I do not want HTTP to be available external anymore. That's my personal policy slash that's what Microsoft also wants. Um, and, so, and, and so like that is one of the things that would be in my custom policy. So you can set your policies here. Okay, so cloud security, zero trust. You can do zero trust in your own data center. However, okay, who's here has heard of zero trust? Okay, yeah. So the idea is, is what we used to do is we would have firewalls. We call it zoning or network security groups. And it's just a firewall and everything inside, it's like, you're probably okay. We're all in the data zone. Everything's probably fine. But then if a bad person, a malicious actor got in, then they could just pivot to any, any of the other ones and get all of the things. But now with zero trust, you're just nothing trusts anything. And the reason why this is important is because of pivoting. And if you do it for everything, it's a lot easier. I'm going to show you like a way that you can do it in Azure. Um, we have like a couple automatic things. So you can do this in regards to ports. You can do this in regards to firewalls. You can do this in regards to your apps. Okay. Terry made this graphic. She, I told her to print pictures or um, stickers of it. I love it. I want a sticker on my laptop. Hackers Heart Flat Networks. Okay. So... Um, don't have a flat network. <laughs> That's what this slide means. Basically, like, good points for good network design. Basically, follow best practices of networking in the cloud, right? Like, some things don't change when you move to the cloud. Okay, next. Um, has anyone seen this article? Um, Vinesh? Uh, wrote it and it's about how basically there is a vulnerability on Confluence where everyone just left something open and then he managed to report on over 50 um, uh, bug, uh, bug bounties in like just a few hours and he was really happy. <laughs> and so sometimes if you find one vulnerability you can just go to all of the bug bounties and get the money and he did that and it's just a lesson for all of us that we need to make sure everything is following zero trust. Okay. Network security groups, also known as firewalls. <laughs> it's just like zoning, and that's what we call it in Canada. <laughs> um, okay, so yes, we should, um, oh, basically what we used to do is we used to have most of the ports open, and instead now we have all the ports closed except for the one you need. And is the next one zero trust? No, okay, never mind. I'm gonna tell you more about closing ports in a second. Another cool thing, another cool feature is Network Watcher. And then there's a section, and it's really small, and it's highlighted there on the left, and I know it's hard to see, but it says effective security rules. So the network will, it's like Wireshark kind of, but for Azure, 
and it's part of it. And so you can watch everything as it goes back and forth. Um, but then there's like a special security sections where we just highlight that. It also, so like let's say that this is what your app looks like, then you can go in there and I know it's hard to see because it's small, but it will actually map it all out for you visually, which is pretty sweet. No more sitting there with Visio for 10 hours trying to make this. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so Azure makes its own firewall. We basically make one of everything now except for password managers. Um, so we have a firewall. It's just like a regular firewall except it's from us. Um, and you can use it to set up least privileges rules. You can put it around storage accounts, logging. Always turn on the logging, right? No heads nodding. Um, so you can turn on logging and then um, you should turn on monitoring. Okay, next. VPN, virtual private network. We also have one of those. I feel like Terry's slides are so much prettier than mine. This is a Terry slide. So this is what it looks like. Um, but we also have something slightly different in Azure called Azure Express Route. So what a lot of people are doing is they have, so no one's like, oh, tomorrow we went to the cloud. Like we went in one day. It usually takes a few years and basically the new things go there. And a, a transformation or a migration takes months to years, right? So in the meantime, we have Express Route, which is a VPN in between you um, and Azure. And it also makes sure that you go really, 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 really fast. Okay, next, Bastion Host. So who here has heard of a Bastion Host? Okay, who here calls it Jumpbox? Because that's what I call it. <laughs> and Terry and I are both like, what are you talking about? <laughs> okay, so it's also a Jumpbox. So you can have the box that you go into from outside the network and then you hop, you jump to the other, or you Bastion, you jump to the other boxes, right? But instead of that, a thing that you can do now is called Just In Time, which I'll explain in a minute. Okay. I'm going to talk about a couple of things that are only available in Azure, which means they're called something else in the other cloud providers. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, adaptive application controls, that's whitelisting. Just in time VM access, that is instead of a jump box. Network hardening, um, which is not in preview anymore, it's out now. Uh, it just tells you, like, this is bad, you should change this. It just helps you harden your network, it's really cool. File integrity monitoring, which I feel goes really well with the first one, whitelisting. So if any of the core files within your system changes, it tells you right away because something bad's happening. So, oh yeah, so we're gonna talk about that one first. Oh, and that one too. I recorded lots of demos and then realized that I had less time. Okay. Just in time is like uh, zero trust for ports. So it closes all of your ports. Um, that's one of my apps, it's called, or one of my virtual machines, it's called DevSlop DCheck. And it's part of the DevSlop project. And I have OWASP Zap installed on it. And so I have all the ports closed 100% of the time. If I want to use one of the ports, I have to make a request. Let's see if I have, yeah. So I request access, and then I tell it how long I want it for, so port um, 88, or 3389, so I want to RDP into it. So I click on, I say only my IP address, so it means I have to have used multi-factor authentication to get into the Azure portal, and then I have to have like access to go into there, then I turn it on, and then it's on for only three hours, and you have to be coming from my IP to get in, and then there's a 64-bit random character password that you have to do. So between all of that, even though I live stream I'll go in and I'll be live streaming. No one's come in. Pretty good, eh? So instead of a bastion host, I do that. Adaptive application controls, waitlisting, um, is basically, so again, on um, the same virtual machine, I have OWASP Zap installed, which is a hacker tool, right? Like I could do malicious things if I were malicious with it, so I really don't want anyone else using it. So I have waitlisting turned on. When what that means is system things can run on the virtual machine, because it's Windows, so the basic Windows stuff, and Zap. And the Zap API, because I call it, and nothing else can run on there. So if someone tries to install something on it, it won't run, and if someone tries to change one of the core system files, it will alert me and that won't run because of file integrity monitoring. So together, it means my VM's pretty damn safe, especially with all the ports closed. Yes. Um, okay, so another thing that I like to do is, so Azure will set up alerts. I don't know, 
uh, if I have time to tell the story of Azure telling on me my second week at Microsoft, I like, okay, no, I don't. And so anyway, it will give you alerts that are really great. <laughs> um, so you can turn on threat protection, which will stop things and also alert you for storage um, and also for your databases. It's, um, it's not a web application firewall. It's at the network level. Next. A WAF, a web application firewall. That is at the application level as opposed to the network level. Who here's heard of a WAF? Awesome. So guess what? We make one. <laughs> so here we have the WAF application firewall rules, and they call them the OWASP rules, but they're actually the core rule set rules, which is a, an OWASP project. And you can have level 2.7 or you can have level 3. Obviously you want the new one. Who's like, oh, give me the old rules? No one. Anyway, okay, so Network Watcher, not only um, can you see um, all sorts of things going back and forth, like you can watch the flow of traffic. So yeah, there's some, there's some Wireshark for us. I was going to say, doesn't this look, oh, that is Wireshark. <laughs> You're like, is this Terry's slide? I can't tell. Um, okay, so there's a whole bunch of network tools, including, so there's intrusion prevention, intrusion detection. Um, there's DLP, there's DNS, there's firewalls and WAF, so firewall network level, oh, two minutes, okay, there's stuff. We also make a SIM, sorry, we also make a SIM, it's called Sentinel. And there's a company named Sentinel One, and we're not the same thing, but they're also cool. <laughs> um, and then we also have advanced data security, so you can classify your data, so you know when there's an incident, if it's the end of the world, or if like you can go get a snack. <laughs> um, and we'll also, we, ha we can run automatic VAs all the time. Okay, so I'm really sorry, but I only have two minutes and I'm just gonna skip to the end where we do the checklist with you, okay? So here are the things I need you to go check and then you can go watch this online after. Set your scope, only, only check things in scope. Verify account structure, identity, access control, all the same best practices apply, it's just different settings, right? You already know all of that. Set an Azure policy, and then if someone is not obeying it, go buy them donuts and ask them nicely, and then after, go check. Turn on Azure Security Center. So after you turn on MFA, turn on Azure Security Center, at least on the free level. It's free! And then just go through and do all the recommendations and fix them. Use the cloud native features, so there's threat detection, adaptive application controls, file integrity monitoring just in time, and now there's network security hardening. And follow the network best practices, like they all still apply. So network security groups, routes, access, network watcher, firewalls, express route, jump boxes. <laughs> um, make sure you're on top of your alerts. A thing that you can do is you can like go through and start customizing them so it stops alerting you on things that are annoying. There's a lot less alerts in here than there are on other um, sims I've used because uh, we know ourselves as opposed to when you plug in a different sim you have to teach it for a long time. Oh, I'm so done. I'm done. I'm done now. I'm done. Okay, so what did we learn today other than we're done? <coughs> we learned this and Here's the resources, just take a picture of this, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>